Hey there, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about VO2 max, what it is, why it's important, and at the end of the video, I'll take some tests to try and accurately determine it. I'm making this video because I'm interested in VO2 max and its measurement and its accuracy. There'll be some science in the video, some examples using my two watches and my ring. There'll be some fitness lab testing at the end of the video. I'm gonna compare the differences between the various methodologies. Before we start, I'm not a doctor, nor am I infallible. Take your doctor's advice, it's the best medicine. And as always, this video might be long, there are chapter markers down below, so you can skip on through to the bits you might be interested in. Let's get going. What is VO2 max? Well, it's a measure of your cardio respiratory fitness, your CRF, and the higher the number, the better. It's a measure of the amount of oxygen you can import, transport, and utilize to transform energy nutrients into performance, or in simple terms, more oxygen equals more power. And the VO2 max is measured in liters of oxygen per minute or milliliters per minute per kilogram. Why is VO2 max so important? Well, we'll delve a little into a bit of science here, and I'm gonna read from this. It's the importance of assessing cardiorespiratory fitness in clinical practice, a case for fitness as a clinical vital sign a scientific statement from the American Heart Association. It's from 2016 and it's by Ross et al. I'll put a link in the description. There are a lot of authors and there's a lot of data in this particular paper. I'll read from the abstract. Mounting evidence has firmly established that low levels of cardiorespiratory fitness, CRF, are associated with a high risk of cardiovascular disease, all-cause mortality and mortality rates attributable to various cancers. A growing body of epidemiological and clinical evidence demonstrates not only that CRF is a potentially stronger predictor of mortality than established risk factors such as smoking, hypertension, high cholesterol, and type 2 diabetes mellitus, but that the addition of CRF to traditional risk factors significantly improves the reclassification of risk for adverse outcomes. I'll read some other pieces because it is, it's a very fascinating article, but here's one. However, a consistent observation is that the largest benefits occur between the least fit and the next least fit group of individuals studied. Stated differently, health benefits are most apparent at the low end of the CRF continuum. Although studies vary, this is generally the case for both all-cause and CVD mortality. This is an often understood but important public health message because one not need to be athletic to gain substantial health benefits from improvements in CRF. So you don't have to be at the top end of the fitness range. Improvements in your CRF, your VO2 max, have most benefit at the lower end of the range. Several studies have linked higher levels of CRF to a reduced risk of developing both dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Higher levels of CRF are associated with lower measures of anxiety and symptoms of depression. Higher levels of CRF are associated with a lower risk of developing certain cancers, including lung and breast cancer, and cancers of the gastrointestinal system. Lower levels of CRF are associated with a higher risk of disability later in life. In summary, Cardiorespiratory fitness, CRF, is really important to your health, and VO2 max is a way of measuring CRF. Further down in the paper, they talk about measurement. CRF can be measured directly, expressed as maximal oxygen consumption, VO2 max, or estimated from the peak work rate achieved on a treadmill or a cycle ergometer or from non-exercise algorithms. Measured VO2 is more objective and precise, but because it is easier to obtain, estimated CRF derived from the peak work rate is the more common expression of fitness, particularly in epidemiological studies involving large populations. So you can go on a treadmill, you can get the old oxygen mask on and you can measure it, or you can use various different rings and uh, watches and sensors to measure it, which is much more easy when you're dealing with large numbers of people. I wear the Garmin F4955, the Apple Watch Ultra, and an Ultra Human Ring Air, and I wear them pretty much all the time. I wear this and this 23 hours a day, take them off and charge them just when I'm showering. I wear this 16 hours a day, I take it off at night and charge overnight, and they're measuring all sorts of data in the background. The Garmin automatically estimates each run or brisk walk, according to Garmin. It's checking your heart rate and the GPS, and it's seeing how hard you work and then it has an algorithm that tells you a VO2 max. I typically run three to four marathons a year and my VO2 max on this varies between, I think it's been as low as 44 and as high as 49 
Recently it went down from 49 to 47. I've absolutely no idea why, but it trended downwards. The Apple Watch Ultra estimates VO2 max, again, walking and running, and its number is significantly lower than my Garmin, 41.6. I don't use it as often as the Garmin, in other words, it's not on at night, so it's not checking my resting heart rate when I'm sleeping. But interestingly, the VO2 max on this number is going up, or on this watch it's going up, on the Garmin it's going down. I also use the Ultra Human Ring Air, which is the easiest by far, I just slip it on and away you go, it's working away in the background. It has a VO2 max of 46, so slightly lower than my Garmin. It says, tells me my heart rate resting is 47, and my heart rate variability 54 is good. And it essentially measures all those three, and it does its little algorithm to see where you are on the VO2 max scale. I like the developments in consumer health metric data collection devices, and I have lots of them as well as these ones. I have a blood pressure monitor, various weighing scales, mats under the bed, all sorts of things. Now, I'm only interested in the relative values, not the absolute values. I'm really interested in when things change, and it is really hard to know how accurate they are, but I decided I would try and see how accurate these three are. In 2019, I had an arthroscopy on my right knee. and It was carried out at the Sports Surgery Clinic here in Dublin, in Santry. I saw that the Sports Surgery Clinic had a fitness lab, and I decided to go there and do some testing. First thing I had was an ECG and consultation with a doctor. They want to know obviously your, your, your general health stuff, and they do an ECG. Then I had a, a general consultation with a fitness consultant and then there was a variety of general flexibility tests i lay down on a, a sort of bed and they pushed up and tested all my muscles all that kind of thing i think i then warmed up on a, on a indoor bike for a while and then there were general flexibility tests go that's it and kick 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 and pull pull right to the top all the way up kick 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 pull pull again right up to the top all the way up 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 pull pull two more kick 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 and pull, 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 last one now, kick, 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 and pull, 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 and relax. Quad and hamstring tests with a variety of jumping and bouncing and, and trying to test your, I suppose, your overall springiness. There was a lot of those kinds of things. There were strength tests with um, push-ups, but then came the big daddy. <laughs> what I really wanted was a VO2 max test. I warmed up on a treadmill and then, yeah, we got going. You warm up on a separate treadmill and then you cool down a bit. Then you get onto the main treadmill and you stick on your oxygen mask. I stuck on a, a polar chest monitor and you run gently and then they increase the speed. They increase the speed up to 13 kilometers an hour, eight miles an hour, which I would be comfortable on a treadmill. And then I was happy that for the maximum exertion that they were gonna do, they were going to change the ramp angle. And so you got to a maximum speed on treadmill of, of the 13K, eight miles an hour and then they changed the ramp angle. And the ramp angle went up in segments and it went up as high as 10, whether that was 10% or 10 degrees, I don't know. But at that point in time, I was, uh, yeah, I was pretty much done. My running partner, Liam, had done a similar test. And I remember he said he felt like he left a little bit out there. And that's what I, I felt. Once you, you stop, you think, oh, I could have gone a bit more. But the results came back and I had a VO2 peak of 4.6 liters per minute compared to the normal, whatever that means, of 2.39 liters Per minute or 193 percent over but my vo2 max score was was well it was 56 milliliters per minute per kilogram it was way higher than the uh, or significantly higher than either watch or ring and yeah i was very pleased and surprised with the results i'll put up a table of values here relative values that i got from garments website and they based theirs on the cooper institute Dot org. But to reiterate, even small increases in your VO2 max will have health benefits for you. Cardiorespiratory fitness, CRF, is important for your health. And VO2 max is a critical measurement of your CRF. Small improvements in your CRF can lead to large health improvements. A ring is the easiest way to measure it. But yeah, full test in a lab was a great fun way measured accurately. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it would be great if you would hit the like button. As always, there will be lots of stuff in the description below and I will happily answer any questions you put into the comments. There will be a big blue subscribe button popping up there and some red videos there. 
Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.